In this video, we're going to focus on graphing piecewise functions, identifying the domain and range, and we're going to go over limits and continuity as well. So let's begin. Let's say if f of x is equal to x squared and 3x over 4 minus 2. Let's say it equals x squared when x is less than 0 and it equals 3 fourths x minus 2 when x is greater than or equal to 0. So how can we graph the piecewise function? So it helps if you understand the graphs of x squared and the other one. I'm going to draw a generalized equation. x squared is a parabola and it looks like this. Okay, that drawing was terrible. Let's try that again. Now, 3 over 4 x minus 2 is a linear equation. And I'm just going to draw a rough sketch, but the y-intercept is negative 2. And the rise over run is 3 over 4. So the graph looks something like this. Now, when x is less than 0, we have the graph x squared. So we have the left side of the graph. And we have the equation 3 4th x minus 2, the linear equation, when x is greater than or equal to 0. So that's the right side of the y-axis. So we need to combine those two parts that are highlighted in the purple circle. We need to combine them into a single graph. So let's go ahead and do it. So the first graph, the left side, that's x squared. Notice that we have an open circle. Notice that x is less than 0, but not equal to 0. So we have an open circle at 0. And if you plug in negative 1 into the equation, negative 1 squared is 1. So we have the point negative 1, 1. If you plug in negative 2 into x squared, negative 2 squared is going to be 4. So we have uh, this point. And so the left side is going to look like this. It's going to be a parabola, just the left side of the parabola. Now for the right side of the graph, we have a linear equation. The y-intercept is negative 2. Keep in mind, this is in the form y is equal to mx plus b. b is the y-intercept, which is negative 2 in this case. And notice that it's going to be a closed circle because for this equation, x is equal to or greater than 0. So it includes 0. Now the slope is 3 over 4. So to find the next point, we need to go up 3 units and then 4 units to the right. So that's going to take us to the point 4, 1. So if we plug in 4 into x, it's going to be 3 over 4 times 4 minus 2. The 4s will cancel, and so it's simply 3 minus 2, which is 1. So we get the point 4, 1. So we can connect these two points with a line. But we have to start from the y-intercept. So that's how we can graph this particular. Now, what type of discontinuity do we have for this particular piecewise function? Is it a point discontinuity, a jump discontinuity, or an infinite discontinuity? Notice that the graph disconnects at x equals 0. And notice that it jumps from a y value of 0 to a y value of negative 2. So it's a jump discontinuity. Now, what is the domain and range for this particular function? The domain represents all of the allowed x values. So if we view it from left to right, the lowest x value on the left side is negative infinity, and the highest is infinity. Is there any x value that x cannot be? Is there a value that x cannot have? 
Notice that x could be anything. We don't have any fractions where we have an x variable in the denominator. We don't have any radicals, no logarithms. And x equals 0 in the second part of the equation. So because x could be anything, the domain for this function is negative infinity to infinity. Now what about the range? For the range, you need to look at the y values. For the domain, you look at the x values. For the range, let's analyze the y values from the bottom to the top. What is the lowest y value that you see in this function? Notice that the lowest y value is negative 2. Now what is the highest y value? This arrow keeps going up forever. So the highest y value is positive infinity. Now notice that y can be anything between negative 2 to infinity. Oh, in this function, it could be negative 1, it can be 0, it can be 1. So it could be anything between negative 2 and infinity. And since it includes negative 2, we need a bracket. So the range is from negative 2 to infinity. Now let's analyze the limits associated with this piecewise function. So here's a question for you. What is the limit as x approaches negative infinity for f of x? This is also known as the left end behavior. So if you go all the way to the left, what happens to the function? Notice that the blue line goes up as you go to the left. So y approaches positive infinity. y is the same thing as f of x. So that's the left end behavior. Now what about the right end behavior? What is the limit as x approaches positive infinity? So what does the y value approaches? So as we go to the right, notice that the curve goes up. So it's going to go up towards positive infinity. Now, what is the limit as x approaches 0 from the left side? So 0, x is 0 anywhere on the y-axis. So as we approach an x value of 0 on the left side, or from the left side, notice that the y value approaches 0 as well. So therefore, this is equal to 0. Now what is the limit as x approaches 0 from the right side? So if we want to approach an x value of 0 from the right side, we have to start with this curve until we get towards the y-axis, where x is 0. Notice that the y value approaches negative 2. So this equals negative 2. Now what is the limit as x approaches 0 from either side? Notice that we have two different answers. The left side is 0 and the right side is negative 2. If those two values do not match, the limit doesn't exist as x approaches 0 from either side. They have to match for the limit to exist. Now the left hand limit, which is uh, this one, that exists, and the right hand limit exists, but the actual limit from both sides does not exist. Since we have a point of discontinuity, at, I mean not a point of discontinuity, a jump discontinuity at x equals 0. A point discontinuity looks like this. It's simply a hole. But this is a jump discontinuity. You can literally see the jump or the disconnect in the graph. Let's try another problem. f of x is equal to 1 over x and radical x. It's equal to 1 over x when x is less than 0. And it's equal to the square root of x when x is greater than 1. So how would you graph the piecewise function? So let's make a graph of the separate two functions. 1 over x looks like this. And since x is less than 0, all we want is this side of the graph. Radical x starts from the origin and, and goes like that. But we only want this portion of the graph starting from an x value of 1 and not the origin. So we got to combine these two pieces together.
feel free to try this problem in the meantime. Feel free to pause the video and work out this example. Find the domain range, any uh, points of discontinuity, and also analyze the limits. The left end behavior, the right end behavior, and at any points of discontinuity as well. Now the graph 1 over x, it has a vertical asymptote at x equals 0 because you can never have a 0 in the bottom of a fraction. So there's a vertical asymptote. And also, because 1 over x is bottom heavy in the sense that the degree of the denominator is higher than the degree of the numerator, the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0, which is the x-axis. So that's why the graph looks like this. So that's just a rough sketch of 1 over x from the left side. Now the square root of x, we need to start at an x value of 1. And notice that it's going to be an open circle because x doesn't equal 1. If you plug in 1, the square root of 1 is 1. So we have an open circle at the point 1, 1. If we plug in 4 for x, the square root of 4 is 2. So we have the point 4, 2. So this should be enough to graph it. So it's going to look something like this. So this is our piecewise function. Now, what is the domain and the range of this function? So for the domain, let's look at the x values. All the way to the left, we have a negative infinity. And all the way to the right, we have infinity. Notice that we have no x values between 0 and 1. There is no curve between 0 and 1. So we have a, a jump discontinuity and also an infinite discontinuity. Whenever you have a vertical asymptote, typically is associated with an infinite discontinuity. So the domain is going to be from negative infinity to 0. That's the left side of the graph. And then union 1 to infinity. That's the right side. But we don't have any brackets because it doesn't include 1, nor does it include 0. x is less than 0, but not equal to it. So this is the domain from negative infinity to 0, union 1 to infinity. Now, what about the range of this function? How can we find the range? So let's analyze the y values. Notice that the lowest y value is negative infinity, because this part of the graph will keep going down. And the highest y value is positive infinity. As the blue line goes to the right, it's slowly going to increase, but it's going to increase forever. Notice that we have no y values between 1 and 0. The curve doesn't touch between these two points. So y is never, there's no y value between 0 and 1. So it's going to go from negative infinity to 0, and it's going to start at 1 and go back to infinity. And it doesn't include 1. So in this case, the domain and the range is the same for this particular problem. Now let's analyze the limits. So what is the left end behavior? What is the limit as x approaches negative infinity for f of x? So as you go all the way to the left, notice that the y value approaches the horizontal asymptote, which is y equals 0. So if you have a horizontal asymptote, that's going to be the end behavior. Notice that the function is 1 over x. If you plug in a large number into x, you're going to get a very small value. For example, if you plug in 100 into x, 1 over 100 is 0 0.01. If you plug in 1,000, 1 divided by 1,000 is 0 0.001. As you increase the value of x, the graph is going to be smaller and smaller. If you plug in negative 1,000, negative 0 0.001 is still very close to 0. So it approaches 0. Now, what about the right end behavior? The limit as x approaches positive infinity. So notice that as x increases, y is going to increase. 
So for example, if we plug in 10,000 into x, y is 100. If we plug in a million, y is 1,000. Therefore, we can see that as x approaches infinity, y is going to continue to increase towards infinity. It simply takes a longer time to get there. Now, what is the limit as x approaches 0 from the left side? So as we approach the y-axis from the left side, notice that the curve decreases towards negative infinity. y becomes negative infinity. Now, what about the limit as x approaches? We can't use 0 from the right side because there's nothing between 0 and 1. But what is the limit as x approaches 1 from the right side? 1 from the left side doesn't exist. But 1 from the right side does exist. So as we approach x equals 1 from the right side, notice that the y value approaches 1. It doesn't equal 1, but it approaches 1. And so those are the limits that are associated with this particular piecewise function. Here's the final example for today. So go ahead and try this one. f of x is equal to negative 3, absolute value, x minus 1, and also 2x minus 5. So it equals negative 3 when x is less than negative 1, and it equals the absolute value of x minus 1 when x is between negative 1 and 4. And it's equal to 2x minus 5 when x is greater than 4. So let's graph each part separately. y equals negative 3 is a horizontal line at negative 3. Now the absolute value of x minus 1, the absolute value of x, the parent function, looks like this. It's a v-shape. But if it's x minus 1, it's going to shift one unit to the right. If you set the inside part, x minus 1 equal to 0, you're going to get 1 for x. So it should look like this. And then the other one, 2x minus 5, we can see that the y-intercept is at negative 5 with a slope of 2. So this graph should look something like that. Now, we need the first graph when x is less than 1. So we need pretty much this portion of the graph. For the other one, we need it from negative 1 to 4. So probably this portion of the graph. And then the other one, when x is greater than 4, so this upper part of the graph. We need to combine those three parts into a single graph. So let's go ahead and do just that. Feel free to try this example in the meantime. So let's start with the first one. y is equal to negative 3 when x is less than negative 1. So since it's only less than negative 1, but not less than and equal to, we have an open circle at negative 1. But the y value is at negative 3, so the point is going to be negative 1, negative 3, which is somewhere over here. And then it's going to go to the right horizontally. So that's the first part of the graph. Now for the second part, the absolute value of x minus 1. So we know that at 1, y is going to be 0. If we plug in 1 for x into this equation, it's 1 minus 1, which is 0. So we have the point 1, 0. That's like the center of the absolute value equation. Now let's plug in this point, negative 1. If we plug in negative 1 into this equation, what's the answer? The absolute value of negative 1 minus 1 is equal to the absolute value of negative 2. Absolute value functions will convert a negative number into a positive number. So the final result is positive 2. So we have the point negative 1, positive 2 
which is over here. And it's going to be a closed circle because x is less than or equal to negative 1. Now, let's plug in the right endpoint of this inequality. So let's plug in 4 into the absolute value of x minus 1. So it's going to be 4 minus 1, which is the absolute value of 3, which is simply 3. So when x is 4, y is equal to 3. And we have a closed circle, actually an open circle at that point. So the second part of the graph looks something like this. Now we need to graph the third part of the piecewise function. So we have a linear equation. Let's go ahead and plug in 4 into this equation. So it's going to be 2 times 4 minus 5. 2 times 4 is 8. 8 minus 5 is 3. So notice that it's at the same point, 4 comma 3. But it's still an open circle because it doesn't include 4. x is greater than 4. Now let's plug in 6 into this equation. So 2 times 6 minus 5, that's 12 minus 5, which is 7. So we have the point 6 comma 7. So that's going to be somewhere over here. Keep in mind, the slope is 2, so you can use the rise of a run. Every time you travel one unit to the right, you can go up two units. So this graph is going to look like this and it's going to continue to increase forever. So that's a rough sketch of this particular piecewise function. Now what is the domain and range for this function? Let's start with the domain. So x could be anything between negative infinity to infinity, but we have to take into account any points of discontinuity. Can x equal negative 1? Because it appears as if we have a jump discontinuity at negative 1. But notice that x can equal negative 1. In this second equation, we do have a closed circle at negative 1. So negative 1 is included in the domain. However, x cannot equal 4. It doesn't include 4 here or here. So the only thing that x can't be in this entire piecewise function is 4. So that's the only value we need to remove. Therefore, the domain is from negative infinity to negative 4, union negative 4 to infinity. That's the only point we got to take out. Now let's move on to the range. So let's consider the y values. What is the lowest y value? The lowest y value is negative 3. And then it continues at 0, and it goes up to infinity. But notice that y never equals 3. So y can't be anything less than negative 3, it can't be between negative 3 and 0, and it can't be 3 itself. So how can we write that in interval notation? So it includes negative 3, but it can't be anything between negative infinity to negative 3. There's nothing here in the graph. So it's going to start from negative 3, and it's going to go to negative 3. And then union, it's going to start back up at a y value of 0. And it cannot equal positive 3 because we have an open circle. So it could be anything from 0 to 3, but not 3 itself. So because it doesn't include positive 3, we need a parentheses at positive 3. But it does include negative 3, so we can use brackets at negative 3. And then another union is going to continue past 3 all the way to infinity. So that's the range for this particular function. So now what about the end behavior? Let's use limits to describe it. So what is the limit as x approaches negative infinity? As we go all the way to the left, the y value will remain at negative 3. So the left end behavior is equal to negative 3. Now what about the right end behavior? What is the limit 
as x approaches positive infinity. So as we travel to the right, notice that the y value continues to rise. It goes all the way up to positive infinity. Now, what type of discontinuities do we have in this graph? So what type of discontinuity do we have at negative 1? Notice that it's a jump discontinuity. The curve jumps from negative 3 to 2. Now what is this discontinuity called? Notice that the curve continues, but we only have an open circle. This is called a point discontinuity, or a hole. Point discontinuities are removable discontinuities. A jump discontinuity or an infinite discontinuity near a vertical asymptote, those are non-removable discontinuities. So those are some things that you should just know. Now what is the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the left side? What's the answer to that question? So as we approach negative 1 from the left side, notice that the y value is negative 3. Now what is the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right side? So as we approach the x value of negative 1 from the right side, the y value is approximately 2. Now what is the limit as x approaches negative 1 from either side. Because the left side doesn't equal the right side, the limit does not exist. What is the limit as x approaches 4 from the left side? What would you say? So as x approaches 4 from the left side, notice that the y value is about 3. Now what about the limit as x approaches 4 but from the right side? As we approach an x value of 4 from the right side, the y value is still 3. So what is the limit as x approaches 4 from either side? Because the left side and the right side, because they're the same, the limit exists. It's also 3. So whenever you have a hole or a point discontinuity, the limit does exist there. But whenever you have a jump discontinuity or an infinite discontinuity, the limit does not exist. By the way, what is f of 4 equal to? Since there's a hole at 4, f of 4 does not exist. But now let's say if there was a closed circle at this point, what is the value of f of 4? So if that closed circle was there, f of 4 would have a value of, if I counted it correctly, this is 6. So it would be 6. It, whatever the closed circle is, that's the value of f of 4. But for this particular problem, since that point is really not there, f of 4 does not exist because this piecewise function does not include 4.